Praise the Lord, precious saints, and welcome to another daily prophetic utterance to start your day. Am I excited to be with you here today to testify of the goodness of God? The Bible tells us according to Revelation 12, 11, we overcome through the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. My God is good. He is Yahweh. Hallelujah. He is Yahweh. He is the I am that I am. He is the beginning and the end. Hallelujah. I'm going to give praise. I'm going to bow down and worship you, Yahweh. I'm going to bow down and worship you here today to testify of your goodness to the people, that they may know that you are Yahweh, that you are a covenant-keeping God that will meet your covenant promise with each and every person that puts their trust in you. Hallelujah. Can I get a hallelujah from somebody today? God is here today. God will visit you here today. God will visit you in your living room. God will visit you in your car. God will visit you in your workplace. God will visit you when you're in the supermarket. God will visit you in your prayer closet. But I'm going to bow down and I'm going to worship God today. And I'm going to say that you are Yahweh. Hallelujah. He is a provider. God. Yes, He is Yahweh, Jireh, because He provides for our needs according to His riches and glory in Christ Jesus. God is a providing God and He will provide for your needs today. But you've got to learn to go by faith, saints. You've got to go not by sight, not by the news you hear, not by the size of your bank account, not by the state of maybe the breakdown in communication in your marriage right now, no matter what the situation is going on, no matter what the doctors have told you, no matter where your children are with the Lord today, God is good every single day. Can somebody say hallelujah? Well, I'm here to testify of God's goodness. A lot of people send me testimonies all the time. And God has been my provider since the very beginning. For those that don't know, In the year of 2011, God said to me, He was preparing me for full-time ministry. And in that time of period of, of time that God was speaking to me, He said, I would have to sell everything that I had to go and follow Him. And in that process of time, it was about waiting on God's time. I'm not talking about some people you meet that say, God has called me to full-time ministry, but then after two weeks, they go back to work or there is problems. I'm talking about when God says and visits you and said, I have called you by name. I have called you, Robert, to be a minister to the nations and I'm preparing you. Hallelujah. It's about faith. You can't do anything without faith, precious saints. God says, when I return, will I find faith? What was he doing? He was instructing his disciples for three years of ministry, of preparing them to go and reach to the ends of the nations. He says, go and make disciples to all nations. He was preparing them by faith. He challenged them in faith faith. He challenged them when they were delivering demons. He challenged them in faith with healing. He challenged them in faith when He says, leave everything behind and come and follow me. He was challenging them in faith in every parable, He said. He was challenged them in faith in every area. In actual fact, many followed Him. But after He started to give the meat of the Word and said, you must go by faith and extremities of what He was saying, there were only few that followed him. God is calling us to a walk of faith. In actual fact, throughout the Bible, the Old Testament, New Testament, over 400 times it is mentioned the word faith because God has a significant importance about faith. In actual fact, the whole of Hebrews 11 is talking about faith. Without faith, we cannot please God. So when God was speaking to me in 2011 and said, you're going to sell everything to come and follow me, it was about God's timing. And in 2012, I was able to achieve that. But when I told my wife that I had to sell everything to come and follow him, she thought I was crazy initially. And it's understandable because not too many people are called to such an extreme 
uh, uh, extreme sacrifice. But let me tell you, every sacrifice that you make for God, God will repay back to you exactly as the Bible says. Those that have left riches, those that have left inheritance, those that have left this and families and whatever, God has promised to pay back to us. <laughs> Can I get a hallelujah? But it's going to require faith. So I said to my wife, God is calling me to, to get rid of everything, to get rid of our nice house, to get rid of our cars. And I only ended up with a van, which was a van to travel my family from place to whatever. And then eventually God was giving her dreams and giving my children visions and dreams. And they would share this with each other, which was confirmation until my wife said, yes, I know God has called you. And as soon as we had that prayer of agreement, we sold our house. And then God released me to the nations. He released me to Africa, where I was traversing throughout Africa, going by faith, people, going by complete faith, rocking up to an airport and traveling to a place, a destination, Destination, not even knowing where I would stay or where I would go, but I would travel and I would minister on buses and on the street, wherever God was. And God, people would get healed and people would lead me to another place or go to a different person. God was moving. God was moving. But I had no place. And even the Bible says that Jesus Christ himself had no head to even lay down his pillow. I didn't even know the next place I would be at. I was sleeping in thatched huts. I was sleeping sleeping wherever. That's what a missionary does. We eat, we drink, we do things. So I did this all for the sake of following Jesus Christ. I was away from my family for five months, four months, three months at a time serving God because when you serve God, there will be sacrifices that are required. But let me tell you, God is a covenant keeping God and He said He would repay back. Hallelujah. Can somebody say, Amen. Yes, I'm going to bow down today. Yes, I'm going to worship God because He is Yahweh. He is Yahweh. And He will provide for your needs as He has provided for mine. Whether it is in a rural area, whether it is in a village, wherever it's been, those people that have walked with me know that I go by complete faith. Whether we're eating beans, whether we're drinking, whatever it is, wherever we lay our head, we know that God is our provider. Hallelujah. The Bible tells us, He said to His disciples as He sent out those disciples, He said unto them, go with nothing. Go with nothing because I will provide for you. Precious saints, I've ministered in pastors' conferences. Those that know me know I never ask for money because God said, I will be your provider. Can somebody say amen? That's the significant hallmark of this ministry. You will never get an email that is requiring money from you because I know my God is Yahweh and He has promised to provide us today. I've gone to pastors' conferences. I've ministered and I said it is time for the church of Jesus Christ to come back to the faith so that when Jesus returns, He will say, will I find faith on my return? He was instructing them for three years to, uh, to instill on them the importance of faith because God is faithful. Can I say, can I get an amen today? He is looking for people full of faith because to be full of faith is to be full of the Holy Spirit. To be full of faith is to be full of the Holy Spirit and to be full of faith is to be faithful. He is looking for somebody faithful today. But to be faithful, you also got to get ready to step out in faith. Don't say to me today, I am too old, Pastor. I'm too young, Pastor. I'm married, Pastor. I'm a single mother or with children, Pastor. Don't give me excuses. God is looking for you to say, I'm available. I will do what God has called me to do. Paul said, I'm content in every season. 
Learn to be content in every season, precious saints. Learn to be content if you're on the missionary floor in Africa, sleeping in a thatched hut, just eating what the locals are, drinking what the locals are, sleeping wherever you are, knowing that God's providing for you. Learn to be faithful when God elevates you. Learn to be faithful even in the humble positions. Will it require sacrifice? Yes, it will require sacrifice. God is calling somebody today. I'm not talking about the false prosperity preachers today. I'm calling those that are called to walk a life of faith. I'm telling you, God provides. I'm telling you, I've never gone without. I'm telling you, God's provided every airfare, every transport fee, wherever I've needed to go. He has provided because I said, God, if you've called me, you're going to provide me. Because when God's work is done His righteous way, it will never lack his support it will never lack his anointing to finish the mission to finish the task and I'm gonna bow down today and say you are Yahweh because I have a testimony my life is a testimony if I wrote a book on so many occasions of faith I've been in cars where the petrol gauges went to full that were empty I've been in places where they provided us a whole car full of food when we had no food because God is Yahweh He is faithful He is faithful no matter what you're going through today. Don't go by how it looks or what you hear, but walk by faith. Can somebody say amen? So do you expect me to sacrifice everything to serve God and God not to reward faithful servants? Let me tell you, He rewards faithfulness. So in 2012, I sold my house. Sold my car. I was left with a, with a small humble car to, to bring my family to and forth wherever they were while I was in Africa. We had enough money to pay rent for one year. But that money ran out. We didn't know where we were going to stay. Someone offered us to stay in a very old house. I'm talking about a 110 year old house. You will see the photos of this house. I will write a book and you'll be shocked. My family had to stay there for over three years while I was out there on the mission field. We all stayed in one room, which is common in Africa, in Asia, in South America, for a whole family to live and sleep in one room. But God is faithful. Paul said, be content in every season. But to be content in every season, God doesn't wish for you to stay there, precious saints. He's not saying you're going to just have this portion of life. No, He's not saying that you're going to stay where you are and you're not going to progress forward. No, because God has a plan and He has your number today. He has your name on His list today. When you remain faithful, God will always come through. Hallelujah. He's a covenant keeping God. I will bow down today and I will worship that you are Yahweh. Because I've got a testimony, saints. I got a testimony. Everything from my website. Everything from my ministry cards. I never tried to make that happen. Somebody came and did it for me. You got to understand when you walk by faith, when you do God's work, His righteous way, it will never lack His support. A divine helper will come along at God's time, not your time. Not your time. You know, He doesn't require you to live by faith for a month. You don't get your answer to prayer, so then you give up. No. He says, go by faith, despite of what you see, despite of what you hear despite of people even making a mockery of you and even your God. Yes, my family thought I was crazy. They said he won't even last a year. Hallelujah. That was 2012, 2011. Look at now. It's 2020 going on in 2021 and I'm just getting stronger. My faith is building stronger and stronger and stronger. That's why the word faith is mentioned over 400 times because God was saying, you need faith. You need faith to serve God, to trust that He will provide for you. So after selling that house, 
humbling myself wherever I've gone, my family humbling themselves, traveling all across Australia in a van, in a tent, ministering to people that they said, who is this man? We've never heard of him. No one knew who Pastor Robert was then. They thought I was crazy. Everyone thought we were crazy. Who are these people? But God, let me tell you, God honors our craziness for him. When he tells you to go here or turn left or turn right, trust me, just obey him. Don't worry about the mockers or the soothsayers or anyone else that is mocking against you, even if it's your own family, because I'm here to testify today, precious saints. For the last three years, I would get random prophecies from people. Now, you've got to understand, God's been speaking to me and He promised me that He would provide me with my home again. <laughs> Hallelujah. So for the last three years, people would randomly come to me and say, Pastor, I had a dream. Pastor, I had a vision. God showed me that He would provide your family with another home. But it's not no ordinary home because, Pastor, you have six children. And God said He's going to provide a house for each and every one of your children because you sacrificed, because you lived in one room for so long. He's going to provide you with a house with a bedroom for every child and a bedroom for you and your wife. That is a seven bedroom home because God is complete and we know the word seven is complete and God is complete. Somebody say amen. How's that going to happen with a preacher that doesn't go, that goes by faith and doesn't ask for money? Only God can do it and it has to be God's timing. So just as I told you guys, I said, make sure in this 10 day fast, you write down your prayer list. I wrote down my prayer list. I knew that the current rental property that we are in is that it was our, our contract was ending in November. And I said to my family, I said, God has told me to stand on His word and faith. I am declaring from September, as we go into the 10 day fast, I will not be staying in this house, but God will provide me with a house as according to His promise, as according to His word. You've got to understand when you go by faith, you don't have the money in the bank to go and buy a home, but you've got to step out of faith. So my wife started to step out. And I said, make sure that when you look for a home, it must have seven bedrooms. It's very hard to find homes with seven bedrooms. Let me tell you, precious saints, because not many people have that many children on this side of the world. And if they are, they're usually worth like in the millions that are some mansion that it's unaffordable. But I said, my God will provide. Let me tell you, for those that know, that was my birthday on Monday, which is the 5th of October. <laughs> Hallelujah. I will bow down and I will worship Him. He is Yahweh. So she told me there was this home. I went to this home. We didn't even have money to buy this home. But I went in there and I said, look, I'm sorry, sir. I don't think that that house is worth this price. In actual fact, sir, I will be honest with you. I only think that this is worth this price, which is 150000 lower than what it was. It was an insult to them, I let me tell you, but I was just being honest. I knew I didn't know how God was going to provide. I left. I left my number. The guy never called me. He said, this guy's crazy. He's not even serious. And I thought, Lord, this guy didn't think I was serious. I kept on fasting. I kept on praying. I kept on knowing that God is faithful, precious saints. Let me tell you, I will bow down and worship that He is Yahweh. And the same God that provides for me is going to provide for you. So I went along. And my wife said, you know what? That house that you went in and you declared those words, that's still on the market. In actual fact, they brought it down $50,000. And I said, well, that guy didn't even return my call. He obviously disrespects people. He's not doing a good job. He promised to even give you a call. But I put my pride aside. I said, God, if you have called me and I've already gone in there, I'm going to go and declare a word again. I went in that house. But before we went in that house, I waited one hour down the road from that house. And I noticed not one person <laughs> went in on that particular opening for that home. 
I said, love, let's pray. We interceded for that hour and I said, God, if this is our home, you're going to do it. I don't know how you're going to provide, but you're going to provide for us. I stepped into that place. I said, hello, you remember me? I said, I never got a return call from you, sir. He said, I didn't think you were serious. The owners thought it was an insult that you were going to offer that. I said, well, you can tell them today. You don't want to be here next week, sir. You don't want to be here in a month's time. I will buy this house and God will buy it with cash. I said, I'll give you this amount for it, which was still way below their expectations. He says, well, I will go and provide this offer to them. You've got to understand, nobody provided an offer in that house, only me, because I went in there and I declare God's word. Somebody say, Amen. I will bow down and worship that He is Yahweh. I didn't think anything of this. This was Sunday before my birthday. He said, okay, sir, give me your number again, because he obviously tossed it out, didn't think it was important the last time. I said, God, you're God. You know it's my birthday tomorrow. Somebody say amen. And for those that know, I said I'm going to take a few days off so I can spend time with my family. I can spend time focusing on settling my family. Somebody say amen. So the next morning is my birthday. My wife woke me up. She gave me a lovely breakfast. My children all love me, wish me happy birthday. And then we went for a walk. And as we were going for a walk, I got a call. And he said, well, these people, they got it evaluated by a bank. And they said, it's even worth this much. And they were kind of insulted about that. And I said, well, tell them. I just added a little bit more. I'll give them this price. And that's my final offer. And God will pay it by cash. <laughs> so I'm going to bow down and I'm going to worship that you are Yahweh. Can somebody give me praise today? On my birthday. He says, okay. I will go and speak to them and get back to you. Somebody say amen. It's my birthday. It's Monday, the 5th of October. Somebody say praise the Lord. He gives me a call in the afternoon. He says, they've accepted your offer, sir. I said, I don't know how this is going to happen, but God's going to do. Let me tell you, by the time of that afternoon, God came through and gave me the amount that I needed to buy that house by cash. I said, sir, whenever you're ready, I'm willing to sign the paper. He came. I signed the paper on my birthday of the 5th of October. Somebody say Yahweh. Yes, I'm going to bow down and I'm going to say that He is Yahweh. Pastor Robert didn't have to try any schemes to make this happen. God provided for His servant because when God's work is done His righteous way, He will never lack His support. He will never lack His anointing to see us through. Somebody say Amen precious saints I'm here to build up your faith today because I have passed through trials I have passed through many things my family have had to pass through many things to sacrifice for the sake of God but let me tell you God has provided me and my family a seven bedroom home debt free I get to keep that the, the paperwork for this house you know, normally when, when you have banks involved, they get to keep the title deeds. I get the title deeds in my wife and my name. And that was my birthday present. Now you know why I bow down. Now you know why I go to the mountain. Now I know why God is providing for all of our needs according to His riches and glory. Can I get an amen? The devil's a liar. Devil, you're a liar. For those that hate me, God is here to testify. God is here to say that I will provide. I bless those that have ever thought that I would never get to where I'm at today because that's what you do. You bless people. But I'm here today to tell the devil, devil, you're a liar. So don't say, precious saints, you're too old that you can't own your own home. Don't say that you're too young 
that you're only single. Don't say I'm single. Don't don't say these words that are stopping you from getting to where God wants you to do. If God can provide for me, He can provide for you. Because let me tell you, He spent three years instilling faith into His disciples so that when their time came, they would be ready with faith. When He returns, will He find faith? Because without faith, you cannot please God. Somebody say amen. I'm going to bow down and I'm going to worship that He is Yahweh. I'm telling you, I'm going to write a book and that book will be so filled with stories of faith, of God's provision, of how God's doing that. But God also will provide for everything that you've sacrificed for Him as He's provided for me. God will also provide for you, precious saints. If you are a servant of God and you're serving the Lord, don't don't join the ministry to make money. Go, go, go into the secular world to make money. But if you are serious about serving God and you do God's work, His righteous way, His way, not your way, not scheming. You don't have to beg. You don't have to uh, borrow from people as a servant of God. All you need to do is trust God that He will provide for your needs. God has a plan for your life. God has a plan and He is looking for those that go by faith. Hallelujah. I could cry with the amount of testimonies of God's goodness and I know He can do it for you. Let me tell you, there is an anointing upon this ministry if you will just join in and understand that it's by faith. If you will step out and stop with the excuses today, whatever's blocking you, whatever's blocking your future, the devil wants to whisper in your ear, you're too old, you're too young, you're uneducated, you can't read, you can't write. Whatever that, whatever that issue is that he is whispering into you, you know, oh, you'll never get married. That's all a lie from the pit of hell. God wants you to step out in faith and know that you are a child of God. Even when you don't even have the money, precious saints, I'm telling you, it requires faith. If I didn't step out in faith, not knowing and just stepping out according to prayer and faith, because remember, to be faithful, you need to be full of the Holy Spirit. To be full of the Holy Spirit is to be full of faith. Then you can be faithful. But it also requires an action. God is asking you to step out today, to bow down and to worship that He is God. Hallelujah, precious saints. All I can say to you today, that He is God. He is Yahweh and He will provide for you. Whatever you're going through today, precious saints, this testimony is to bring glory to Jesus Christ. No matter where you are today, He is God. He is Yahweh. Be blessed today. Be blessed today. Be blessed today. Be blessed today, precious saints. We've got the fast coming up in October. In just, a, in just in less than two weeks, make sure you join. Make sure you write down your prayer request and believe it despite of how you see things, how you hear things and believe and stay faithful, full of faith because God will provide for you also in Jesus' name. You can subscribe to us if this is the first time. Yes, you can. You can follow us on Facebook or Instagram. It's always there to encourage you at this particular time. I'm taking a short break to be with my family, to rejoice and just worship God. That's why I've come to the bushlands today to worship God and thank Him for His goodness, precious saints. This is Pastor Robert Clancy from Narrow Path Ministries in Perth, Western Australia. It is time. It is time to catch the fire of repentance revival as we prepare for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Shalom, shalom, shalom. By faith, the same faith that revival is coming, Church of Jesus Christ. From my family to yours, God bless you. We love you. We are praying and joining with you in agreement for your prayers. In Jesus' name, shalom, shalom, shalom.